Hi everyone, MI News comes to you again. Before we begin this very continuation of awareness on turbaning and its effect on the youth and people of Southeastern State, we send you the three cardinal greetings of the world. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on your zone. We thank you for listening. Like we stated yesterday, we will continue the second part of the awareness lectures and discussions on turbaning by the Islamic emirs of the North on the head of the South Eastern politicians, mainly the governors. If we don't do this, we are doing the service to the people because the Bible says in Hoshea chapter 4 verse 6, it says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also reject you ask my praise because you have ignored the law of your Lord. I also will ignore your children. We don't want our children to be ignored. We don't want that knowledge to be lacking. We want everyone to have the knowledge why the youth of Igbo nation, the youth of southeastern states, are being exterminated by the government of Muhammad Buhari and supported by the southeastern states governors to revenge the killings on Boko Haram's who were regarded as terrorists during the time of Jonathan. For a recap, we will inform you of the things said by the president before he became the president of Nigeria and he was a presidential aspirant and why he first and foremost declared IPOB as a terrorist organization is to revenge what Jonathan did to Boko Haram. Jonathan on his own part did that to forestall peace and unity according to his system. On assumption of office, President Buhari did not go back to the militant to fight them, the Niger Delta militant. Instead, he turned back to fight the youth of the Igbos using the turban the governors before we go on we will now go back to recap what he said during the time he was aspiring to be the president of nigeria this was said yesterday but we have to recap it he say here he says buhari upset with government clamp down on boko haram terrorist states you see his picture is here. Say the former head of state, presidential candidate of the Congress for Progressive Change, CPC, Major General Muhammad Buhari, has faulted, has faulted, <laughs> not the word, has faulted the federal government's clampdown on Boko Haram Islamic insurgents. Note, 
he accused the government of killing and destroying the houses of members of Boko Haram while the Niger Delta militants were given special treatment. This is the point where the for, former military president became mad over the killings of the Boko Haram members. President Goodluck is a Christian. In his view, he has no right to kill the members of the Boko Harams. They are Muslims as well. And what are they aspiring to do? That is the question before we move further. The Boko Haram members is an Islamic sect that believes the northern politics has been seized by a group of corrupt, false Muslims. It wants to wage war against them and the federal government of Nigeria. These are the two people in the Boko Haram's intended to wage the war. The corrupt false Muslim politicians and the federal government of Nigeria to create a pure Islamic state ruled by Sharia law. And he knew it and these were the people he was supporting and asking Jonathan why he should kill them and destroy their houses. Then what is the Niger Delta militant demand? Why? It is stated, according to the news report also, that the militants, the, what they call them Niger Delta militants, we are asking the oil explorers the foreign oil explorers in their various lands who we are exploiting them to look into the degradation of ecological system and cleanse the land which has been going on for a long time. Remember Ken Sarawewa? and the lack of adequate compensation for their lands and the destructions being carried out by the foreign oil companies. This we are their own demand. You see the differences. They want to be compensated. They want them to cleanse the land, the water, the ecological systems have been destroyed. On the other hand, the Boko Haram wants to recreate and put in place pure Islamic state ruled by Sharia law for the entire nation. That is where they are fighting the federal government to take over and place Sharia law for every Nigerian. And this, the former president knew about it. He did not question them. But he was angry that Jonathan treated the militants with soft hand while clapping down on members of Boko Haram. That was why when he came in, he decided to do otherwise. We will look at the activities of the president before he entered into the leadership. We will look at it and we will see what happened. We will look at what this man is saying. We will look at his activities and his condemnation. So a very we well known leader in this country said that any attempt to uh, any attempt to, to, to attack and fight insurgency is an attack on the law. 
So, you know, when you have such huge political considerations, there are, there are, there are difficulties. I mean, Buhari said that in the newspaper. General Buhari said that any attack on Boko Haram is an attack on the North. So what you do as a government, you know, you know so you, you, you want to attack Boko Haram, at the same time, a leader, a respected person in society, somebody who carries, I mean, the last vote, the, the last election, over 12 million people voted for him from the North, a man like that, you cannot ignore him. Now he so you see the first argument. The first argument now has been cleared by the the interview and the, the interviewed. The speaker has informed us how the present president said attack on Boko Haram is attack on the north. So this is to bring it to the reality of what he said in his interview that Jonathan Goodluck, who was the former president, treated the Boko Haram members with hardship. He was not soft, while he was soft to members of the militants. Niger Delta Militant. And that is why the two definitions of what these two people, group of people want is being displayed so that everyone will know what these two agitators or two group of people who are fighting for one thing or the other really want. The other one wants the militants, as they call them, want clean environment, compensation, and a good working environment by the oil companies. The other wants to take over the government and put Sharia law, and that was what the present president was supporting. We will go again to see, before we continue, on the description of who these governors, the southeastern governors, Turbaned by the emirs are fighting with Buhari against their own people to ensure that the aspirations of Buhari to ensure that the support for Boko Haram is actualized in all the states of southeastern state. These governors, the governors from the southeast, they are there, the governors from the south-south, and these are the Two areas that made up of the old southeastern states. We will see what the Boko Haram and the international community has to say or do to these very new developments this morning in the kidnapping of nearly 300 schoolgirls in Nigeria. The leader of the militant Islamist group responsible for their abduction appeared in a new video. As Deborah Pata reports, he's mocking the international campaign to free those girls. Good morning. It's been three months since the girls were kidnapped, and in those 90 days, the Nigerian government appears to be no closer to finding them. The global social media campaign to bring the over 200 schoolgirls safely back home has been met with scorn and derision in this new video rant from Boko Haram leader Abu Bakr Shikhao. Bring back our girls. Oh, oh, oh. Bring back our army. Bring back our army. Jonathan. Jonathan. Gel, 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 Christian. Bring back our army. Bring Back Our Army refers to Boko Haram's demand for a prisoner swap in exchange for the kidnapped girls. Jonathan is Nigeria's president, good luck Jonathan, whose government has so far failed to secure the safe return of the schoolgirls. Negotiations for their release have stalled, but it's hoped they could be revived again. The last proof of life of the kidnapped girls was a video released by Boko Haram two months ago. It's believed the girls have all been taken across the border to neighboring African countries. The latest taunting. So this is the issue. You can by yourself distinguish why the Igbos, why the Igbo youths 
why the Fulani his men invaded the whole south from Enugu to Delta to Edo State to Ebony State to Anambra State to Imo State to Bayasa State to Cross River State to Akwaibom State to Abia State in fact all the states in the southeastern state and what do they do are they not killing are they not raping women are they not butchering people with the instruments that we are giving to the governors as gift during their turbaning these are what we have to assess by ourselves and the president who has before this period said by himself that the regime of Jonathan was against their people. And he came in through all the support and now turned back to revenge. And it's not revenging on Jonathan's hometown or those militants. He now turned against the Igbo youths killing them day by day, using the turbaned emo governors. And we will go to find out what those governors are up to. In this very analysis, yesterday we were able to inform you how the northern politicians and their emirs guarded the caliphate state of the north how they guarded it there's no penetration of destruction how many times have you seen all the insurgents the eswap the boko haram the fulani his men the bandits all of them there how many times have you seen the military going after them in Plateau State, there is problem. They kill people there every day. In Benue State, they kill people there every day. In Bronu, everywhere. Have you seen the president or the governors of those areas request for military to invade the youths at all costs? Reports recently shows that some, there are some elements of collaborations between them and the military because the government shows lukewarm attitude and based on what uh, Okupe has said in the interview with channels and what Rescue News has said about what the president said seven years ago and what the display of the Boko Haram in this very video has explained you find that they are not fighting the Boko Harams. Instead, they are fighting the youth of southeastern states to ensure that they revenge, virtually they revenge against the killings, despite the fact that they are making the whole system porous in the south for eventual clampdown on anyone who comes against what they are doing. But in the north, they fortified the caliphate northern protectorate. Well, what do our, the governors of the southeast do? They go back. All of them have taken that Tobani. From You look at Imo State, you look at Abia State, if you go to Abia State, or Joseph Kahlo was the former governor, you go to Imo State, they have two Toban uh Governors, the former governor Okorocha and the present governor uh, Ozodemma, what is happening there? That is the question. Then you go to Cross River State, you go to Anambra State, you go to Enugu State, you go to Akwaibom State, the two Akwaibom governors. You go to Bayasa, the Bayasa, the present Bayasa uh, uh, governor, then the former president, the River State, the present River State governor, the former River State governor. Amechi and the weak Ebony State, Omahe, Bayasa State, Derry, the former president Jonathan, who 
Because of him, Buhari is killing the Igbo youths. He himself indicated that he is not an Igbo man. He has nothing to do with Igbos. But yet, Buhari did not go to his village to wage war against him because he was the person he accused. But he came down to the Igbo state to wage war against them. The question will be why people may say he is uh, waging war against them because of the the yes, you might be careful. because of the agitation. Then what is the agitation about? When you compare the allegations against the uh, Niger Delta militant who were fighting against the exploitation of foreign oil companies, degradation of their ecological system, and the lack of adequate compensation, then you look at the demand of the Boko Harams, which is to turn the entire nation into Islamic State ruled by Sharia law, and the demand of the Biafran agitators, which was also caused by the Nigerian government. First, the fourth war against them between 1967 to 1970. They said there will be three hours. The three hours, they never, the reconstruction, the reconciliation, and the rehabilitation, which never came to be. There are a lot of marginalization, appointments everywhere, lack of infrastructure development, mistreatment. They said, okay, they have sought the, 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 uh, the, the ways they can stand on their own. Then there was these two possibilities one from the african union where you can ask for self actualization self separation then they go to the united nations there is a self determination principles and rules just like in uh, african union and other international human organizations the human right has given them the opportunity to do so and they are doing it following the guidelines given by the united nations and african union so the three are not the same it is the most dangerous is that of boko haram that want to rule the entire nation where you have christian and muslims they want to rule them by force by introducing sharia law for everybody that is the difference you have the three in mind the Niger Delta militant as they call them, the Boko Haram as they call them, then Buhari is using the fact that there is agitation of Biafra to kill the Igbo youth. We will see how that goes in the next lectures and our awareness. We will see how that goes. Then the governors have given the opportunity. These are the governors who have created this chaos. All of them has run down or they have all run down to the north to receive one chieftaincy Islamic title or the other with their gift which we detailed yesterday. We gave them yesterday. Then how are they, the question is how are they protecting their own territory, their own protectorate, their own eastern region? With these issues now, with what we have explained, the North have fortified their area. What did they do? These governors who have gone to take title, Islamic titles, whose duties they never understood before they signed the agreement to pick up these titles and to be political agents of the caliphate. Come, they came back and started killing their people. You see the whole scenario. See the map of the protectorate. You see the map of Northern Protectorate, the Northern State. This is the Niger Coast Protectorate, the Eastern region that made up of the same Biafra. See, you see the warriors. They are surrounded. Boko Haram is there. Police, uh, DSS police is there. East Swap and the, all the militants, the Fulani Hismen, the bandits, the military are there. On the other side, you see the chief of army staff, you see uh, uh, Chief Omahe forming his own bag, all to kill these people. 
the, the, those who crowned them, the AMS, are waiting at all corners, waiting to receive reports of what, to congratulate them on what they are doing. When they are doing it and it's not functioning well, they invite the military. This is the game. And these are the, the unknown government, they invented it. Because the same unknown government, are, they are using them in all countries where there is insurgence. Where the, all these ISIS, Taliban, every, all these militants all over the country, in Iraq, in Iran, in uh, Somalia, all of them, they have the same circle. There, you see the unknown government operating between 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock, killing people, destroying police stations, government uh, houses, hospitals, and everything. And Buhari knew about it. The governors, because they have sworn the oath, the AMS knew what is happening in other countries. They knew that they want to Islamize the whole West Africa, the whole Africa. They are operating everywhere. Mozambique, they are there. Chad, Libya, they are in Niger Republic. They are everywhere. All not African countries. Foreign countries or Western world knew about them. They are operating everywhere. But the governors blocked their ears and are supporting the killings of Igbo youths in whichever name they want. They may say they are fighting for Biafra. They have the right to fight because the law, they are operating under the law of United Nations and the African nation. You don't clamp down on who is going through the right channel to fight whatever he wants to fight. All you have to do, they will present their, their, their demand and the country that is oppressing them will go and defend themselves. It does not mean that you have to kill them. But unfortunately, the government of these eastern states are helping them to carry out this job. Then what do they, they, the AMS do in areas where the governors refuse to accept or be turbaned? What they do that the AMR do does what they call Astra protection of Fulanese in southeastern states, where they do not have turbaned governors. They are doing it in Enugu. They mandate them. For instance, the AMR of Bichi, Adobayere, was in Enugu, we met with the governor of Enugu and was insisting that the Fulanese be protected, irrespective of what they do. They have to protect them. And these people, being that, the governors being that, they were not prepared. They feel inferior before this group of people. They feel because they are, have taken all the positions in the country, from the military, to the judiciary, to the government, to everywhere. Then they, be, they are afraid and do not do anything. Instead, it is good for them to kill their people in order to satisfy these northern emirs and the government of Buhari. They kill their people at a point. You see in Enugu somewhere where the governor was chased out by the, Boko Haram, uh, the Fulani his men. He ran Although he was with the police, they have to run. Because if they kill any of, the, of them, then the government will come against him. The same thing applies. You see, not only is the MA of Bichi, also Sanusi is coming, the MA of Kani, to solicit for support, to ensure that no Fulani man, none of their businesses, none of their cows, none of everywhere they are, is attacked. That is where when they kill people, when the owners of the village ask why should they kill them or attack them back, the government of the state will call the police, call the military to go and kill his own people to protect these people who are killing them. How many times have you seen any of the governors in the state 
calling for judicial inquiry into why the Fulanese are killing and call the leaders of the Fulanese in their state to stop this or they will ask them to vacate the, the state. No. It's not only in Enugu. The solicitation also goes to the Akwa Ibom. Ah, in Akwa Ibom, the governor, not only that he is a sympathizer of the people, but he has no moral authority because all of them are in the same shoes. He, he didn't have that audacity. He has no particular influence on his own person to carry out duties without falling into the trap of the caliphate. They protect the Fulanese in the, in the, in the state, in Akwaibom, ensure that nothing happens to them. Instead of anything happening to them, it is good. They call the DSS, they call the military, they call the police to go and massacre their own people. Plus the killings the Fulanese and the bandits are doing in their states. It's not only him. It happens also to a do state. How many times have the emirs gone to a do state to solicit to ensure that none of their citizens are killed? You see the pictures. Here is also Sanusi coming back to Edo State to ensure that whenever they hear there is trouble that any of the Fulanese are attacked, the next day you see them, they will arrive in that very state to inform the governor that it is their duty to ensure that the citizens, the Fulanese, are not killed. If they do it, they are in trouble because AFR, uh, EFCC they have created will come and pick him and they make allegation against him and put him in jail. This is why they have used their own hands to sell the members of their states to sell the entire eastern region handed over to them by the old politicians. You see their own politics has no morality. The security of the people is zero as long as they are concerned. They are just like mumus kept there to just watch. At the end of the day, what they are looking for is what the benefit they will receive. Therefore, you kill the people, I will receive my benefit. After all, at the end of the day, I am a governor. I receive my gratuity. It's coming. I will do everything I want to do. They cannot defend their people. That is the problem. None of them, when you go back, you find that none of the citizens have been protected. They have not protected them. They have not done anything to ensure that the citizens are safe. But none of the chiefs exist Obhas, Oluos, do go to the north to tell them not to inform them whenever there is killings of the southerners, of the eastern regioners, or the citizens of their state are attacked. They go there and solicit and tell them, don't kill my people again. As they used to come down and say, don't allow your people to kill my people. They don't do it. How many times have they burnt down markets, shops, destroyed valuable properties of traders, businessmen in the north? How many times have the bandits, the Boko Harams, burnt shops in the southeastern state, including the western state? What do they do? nothing so we are using this opportunity to inform the people these are the things that is happening that everybody cries what is happening in the southeast what is happening in the southwest these are the things everywhere is porous because the governors 
believe that they don't have that intrinsic capacity to fight for their people. And that has led to the problems everyone is having today. They do not, I repeat, the governors of the South East are not helping the matter because they sold themselves. No one is fighting for the people because of lack of interest on the people they are ruling but they are protecting the interest of the caliphate that crowned them, that comes to them, that try to influence them in everything they do. This is all we are going to do. We thank you once again. We ask you to share this video, make it viral, Everyone wants to understand what is happening, but some do not have the access to know that. This is a good medium. It, that is why it is on slice, so that you watch, you see. You watch, you see, not giving you the oral information, but you see the information using your own eyes, then you can be able to calculate by yourself. Are these things real as we see them every day does it happen is it happening yes these are happening but we do not know we can now understand the game thank you very much for listening we ask you to continue subscribing so that you'll be able to receive the next lectures the next awareness we have a lot to display so that people will be aware and know what is happening and we ask you to extend it to your friends and well wishers. God bless you all. Thank you very much. <laughs>